Hey there, my name is Eric Thomas. I'm a Power Apper here in Seattle. And I was asked by a couple friends in the Power Apps forums to create a quick video on how to do a gallery overlay. So gallery overlay is kind of tricky. It allows you to place uh, objects on top of an image below. So this could be a map, could be a floor plan, could be anything that uh, where you want to show kind of spatial uh, separation but what's cool is <clears throat> because this entire piece here is a gallery it allows you to get all the benefits of the gallery such as filtering navigating and what have you so here you can see me filtering uh, items by these map pins so really a cool little hack and I'm going to show you uh, how to do it uh, I learned this initially from Medi who is an awesome contributor and you know program manager of the power apps tool and also mr dang helped me out a lot uh, i'll share our forum post uh, in the notes below here so you can refer uh, for more information but basically uh, step one to get to uh, you know this kind of this solution here is to get your map image into power apps and so you can take a screenshot of your map um, if you already have a JPEG or a ping file of your map, go ahead and, and save that somewhere uh, on your computer. And then you will go to File, Media, and then Browse in, in order to select your map image file from your computer. And once you have that uh, <clears throat> into Power Apps, we're going to insert an image control. Now I'm just going to make this image control the entire size of the screen here. You can make it as large or as small as you want. It's all dependent on your design. And then I'm going to set the image property of this image control to whatever I named my uh, image in the media folder there. In this case, I just took a quick screenshot, so mine has kind of a goofy name. But bottom line is uh, step one, get the image of your map into your, um, your app here. <clears throat> The next thing you're going to want to do is insert an icon. Uh, let's just choose a map, uh, map pin icon right here. And you're going to place this um, wherever your point of interest is on the map. So for example, if I have something right here in Abbeville, I'm going to place my pin there. And the trick here is to gather the X and Y coordinates of this spot. Okay, so what I want you to do is literally write down uh, the X and Y coordinates of wherever you've placed your pin and also put a name down there. So let's just use, for example, mom's house. Okay, has an X of 1242 and a Y of 260. Once you've recorded that first location, move your pin to the second location you want uh, your, your gallery overlay to show up and grab those X and Y coordinates along with a name. So for example, garden and an X of 472 and a Y of 120. Keep doing this until you have all of your points of interest, uh, the X and Ys captured. Okay, And you can do this in a SharePoint list um, using you know, just simple columns here for the X and Y coordinates. If you're real tricky, you might even be able to <clears throat> scale the size of your uh, map here to Latin long coordinates. Uh, that's pretty tricky, so I haven't tried that out yet. But anyway, once you get an array of your X and Y values along with the, the names of the locations, it's time to put our gallery overlay uh, over the top here. So we're going to insert a blank gallery. And again, I'm just going to make this the entire size of the screen here, like so. And I'm going to take this icon and I'm actually going to cut it from my app and I'm going to put it into the gallery. So be sure you, you select that little edit icon there that helps you get inside of the gallery. And I'm just going to paste that in there. And like you would suspect with, with any galleries, I get um, you know replication of whatever I have in one element here. This is going to play in our favor in a moment. Uh, the next thing we're going to do real quick is to insert a uh, text label. Okay, and just kind of place that over your map pin there. And now we're going to create a collection. 
So in order to create a collection, you need some type of trigger, whether that's the on start property of your entire app, the on visible property of one of your screens, or a button or some other trigger. So I'm just going to quickly stick a button in here so we can whoops, stay visible. And this actually I don't want inside of my uh, gallery there. So I'm going to come down here. <clears throat> and uh, we are going to create a, a collection on this property. Or excuse me, on this button right here. So we're just going to kind of make it a little bigger so it stands out. All right. So what type of magic do we want this button to do? We want it to gather a collection for us. I'm going to copy this collection off of another screen here, and then we'll walk through exactly what it's doing. And you'll have this in the, uh, in the screen notes there, actually in the sample app. So we're going to select the on select property of the button, paste in this collection here. Now let's walk through it. So we are performing a clear collect function. Uh, creating a collection called map pins each record so notice there are curly brackets at the end of each line that basically indicates that each one of these is a new record in the uh, collection so each one has an ID a location an X and a Y and these are probably pretty bad names here this should be something like X coordinate, Y coordinate, because you don't want to confuse it with built in uh, Power Apps naming conventions, but uh, I'm not going to do that right here. Just uh, keep that in your, in your hat there. Okay, so what this basically means is when I click this button, a collection named Coal Map Pins is created, and these records are stored inside of it. So when I come in here and I click the button, and then go to View Collections, here you can see the collection that I just created. Now again, this could be stored in a SharePoint list instead of a collection. It could be stored in a SQL server, what have you. You just need these X and Y coordinate um, items for your uh, gallery overlay. So here comes the, the secret sauce, if you will. <clears throat> we are going to go to the template size uh, property of the gallery control and we're gonna set our template size to zero now that's the first trick right there okay the second thing is we're gonna set our items property to our collection we just created coal map pins now you can kind of discern there if you look close that each one of the records in my collection has its own pin and um, label. Now we're going to <clears throat> give each uh, map pin and label our coordinates from our collection. So we're going to set the X property of our icon. This is our mapping, our map pin. We're going to set its X property to uh, this item dot X. And that, you know, again, bad naming convention. That should say X coordinate, but you'll get it. And then, of course, we're going to set the Y property of the same map pin to this item dot Y. All right, starting to see things take shape. Let's select our label now. And we want its X property to be <clears throat> this item dot X and it's y property to be oops this item dot y and here we'll do a little tweaking because you can see it doesn't quite line up so let's maybe take away i don't know 35 pixels that gets us up above the map pin and then for our x coordinate we'll do something similar we'll go uh, take away 35. that gets us pretty well lined up there um, let's see, actually I should go minus 40 and then I should align the label to the center. That'll make it look nice. Okay, so now you can see that with one label and one map pin icon, we were able to create kind of an array here of uh, points of interest. Okay, on the next screen I'm going to show you how to filter 
um, by this gallery overlay, which is kind of neat. Okay, so let's peek at this part of the equation. Okay, so <clears throat> what happens now is I have the same gallery overlay. Uh, in this case, the gallery is as large as the screen, I believe. Whoops, sorry about that. The gallery is, uh, oh, I've shortened it up a little bit, okay, to kind of match my image underneath here. Um, but now I have another gallery in place, and this is connected to a SharePoint list. Now, the thing that my SharePoint list and my gallery have in common is this location name, okay? So Mom's House, Billy's House, Sally's, Samantha's, etc. These are the same location names. This is kind of like a lookup column that I have in my collection here. Okay, remember, this is the collection for my gallery overlay, and here's those location names. Okay, so what I did is I put <clears throat> a second, let me just kind of, uh, let me see, I guess I could set this kind of visibility to false just to get it out of the way, and we'll rebuild here. What I did is I put a, gal a blank gallery in my app, and this is the one that I'm going to be filtering items by. Okay, I'm going to set its uh, items property to the name of my SharePoint list. Okay, map pins, and I added this SharePoint list by going to view data sources and then add data source and go through that whole step there. Okay, so I have the items property set uh, accordingly to my SharePoint list. But I have to do a couple other things here. <clears throat> um, actually, let's, let's go this way. I'm gonna insert a label and we're gonna go this item dot uh, location name and then I'm going to insert an image and we can see right away this is dot location photo and I might as well do one more here and we'll set that to uh, location address okay so now you can see here that you know I have a gallery of items just like I would but how do I filter this gallery by my gallery overlay and the way I do that is by affecting the items property here. So I don't just want to give it the SharePoint list. I want to look up this, oh, excuse me. I want to filter this SharePoint list where the location name, okay, equals my gallery overlay dot selected. So in this case, my gallery overlay is called, uh, I think it's, yeah, gallery one underscore one. Again, bad naming conventions, but just kind of doing something quick here. So <clears throat> gallery one underscore one dot selected, and this is kind of tricky, but dot location. Okay. So now watch what happens. If I come in here and I select Sunset Viewpoint, aha, Samantha's house, garden, what have you, I get a filter of this other gallery. So, you know, just a quick little hack here. I thought it was pretty fun. There's a bunch of nuance here. Again, uh, you should check the uh, forum post down in the show notes to kind of understand the nuance. But anyway, for the buddies, Y.O. Tim, Timmel, and everyone else. Thanks so much for the help, and it's been fun hacking with you.